All right, so we're going to get started with today's work. Uh, I have two things to talk about before uh, before our main lecture. Uh, this week is the last week of this class of this month, and most of my classes last one month, three to four weeks, maybe five weeks, depending on the month, but most of my classes last one month so that you can get this information quickly and use it quickly. So that means that next week is going to be a new month and a new set of classes. I want to show you here briefly, and if you'd like to look at it too, you can go to the web, so open up any web browser. Let's go to the college's website. Uh, how many of you found out about this class or any of our classes via the printed catalog? A lot of people, that's good. So they send out that catalog, but I would recommend to also be aware of the digital catalog. The college's website has a digital version of the catalog, sdce.edu. Make a note of that. That's where we have the most up-to-date catalog of our classes. I like the printed catalog and browsing it, but if you'd like to find specific classes, it's cumbersome because there isn't exactly a very good uh, way to search inside of it. Our digital catalog here, you can search by topic, uh, campus, instructor, and you know time of the year. So I recommend you look here to keep up to date with our classes. Uh, the way you would do this, you go to sdce.edu and then you click on choose a class you can click that choose a class button. There are then various departments. I would recommend you, you skip them all and scroll down to find to go to everything. This will give you a list of everything because sometimes there's a class that isn't exactly where you think it is. And if you go to everything here, you can search. So click everything and that'll load up for the summer semester. We have hundreds of classes, and it's got uh, a search search box right here, keyword. So if you're looking for some sort of business class, you can type business, and it'll give you all of our business classes, accounting, beginning, etc., days and times. Well, I'm biased, and I want to stay employed, so if you search for my name, you'll find my classes, Campos. You'll find all the classes I'm teaching this summer. Better yet, you can then click on the column of start date and it will put it in order of when these classes are coming or when they have already passed, if you missed it. So if you put start date this month, um, I had an online class starting on the 13th. We have this class on the 16th, which ends today. Next month I'm doing um, my uh, part two class of uh, app programming. However, you cannot get into that unless you did part one, so look for it in the fall. I have the SEO class again. If you didn't get a chance to sign up for search engine optimization this month, it'll be offered again next month. That is a one-day mandatory orientation. You come on the 6th at 5 p.m. in this room, and you will get the syllabus, the ad code, the orientation, and then besides that, this class is online. At your pace, you log into the class, you see the material, you follow the lectures, etc. But we have one day of in-person orientation on the 6th. That class lasts one month. Now, that's four weeks. Now, if you took the uh, SEO class for this month, it was three weeks. The first week was still the last week of the fall semester. No, the spring, the spring semester. So yes, there is one more week of instruction on the SEO class if you take it next time. You may have just taken it now and you only want the fourth week of instruction. You could do that. You could sign up at the beginning or the fourth week to get access to a brand new fourth week of instruction. I apologize for that, it's kind of weird. They only put three weeks this month instead of four weeks. So if you're interested in that, you can talk to me about it. 
Fridays will continue uh, to be the social media sequence. So there will be part two starting next Friday. In that class, we're going to cover Pinterest, LinkedIn, Instagram. Let me see here. That one is also the full month. It goes from the goes from the seventh to the twenty eighth. So it's four weeks. Uh, so we we should have four new social networks there. It's going to be Pinterest, LinkedIn, Instagram, and one more. Um, maybe uh, I know we're going to cover YouTube eventually, but it, I'm not sure if it's that on that class. So if you didn't take part one, if you know people uh, that might be interested that didn't take part one, that's okay. Let them know that they can come into part two. There is no prerequisite to have taken part one before you go to part two. So uh, I would tell your, your colleagues, come join us for part two, and they will get registered next week. Then a month after that in August, uh, we have the SEO class again. That one is only two, only uh, nineteen. That one is three weeks again. So usually that SEO class is four weeks. It's going to be four weeks next month, but it was three weeks this month, and apparently it'll also be three weeks two months from now. If you didn't quite like the online version of it or, or want to do it in person, it will be offered, but in the fall. I'm not exactly sure what days and times yet, but again, search the digital catalog, which will be much more up to date than the printed catalog. And when the fall semester comes around, if you'd like, you can come for the search engine optimization class in person. And basically what that class is, it's sort of like the cornerstone of almost all my other classes. This class, we, it's all about social media, but that concept of social media is part of optimizing your online presence to get found. Search engine optimization has many factors, many facets. One of them is social media. One of them is blogging, etc. So that class ties almost all my classes together. Then in August, on Friday, social media part three. And again, a person had, did not need to take part one or two to come to part three. They missed various lectures, but they can still come to part three. And by then, I believe we are talking about YouTube. Uh, we're going to cover YouTube on two days because part one of YouTube, we need to talk about how to create a video. And then part two is how to use YouTube. You can't really use YouTube without video content. You can use Twitter with text. You can use Twitter with pictures. You can use Facebook, text, pictures, but YouTube really is about video. So we're going to have a lecture completely on how to make a video and then how to use YouTube, most likely for part three. And that goes from the fourth to the 18th, so three weeks. Then the semester ends for the summer, and we've got a fall semester, a whole new slate of classes. Those classes are being finalized. I don't know the days and times just yet. And there'll be more classes that are not listed here, such as my blogging class. I teach a class on blogging, on writing articles to help you get found or to make money off of them. I also do a class on um, what was oh, WordPress. You need to build a website. I teach a class on WordPress, how to build a website, how to add e-commerce features to it in case you want to sell something. That's coming in the fall, some day of the week. So that's the class schedule online, classes I recommend, and such. Any questions on future classes? Yes? We're going to cover that today, actually. Uh, how to write ads, paid ads for Facebook and other social networks, yeah. All right, so that's the digital catalog. Yes. When you do the online class, like how long is it? A couple hours? I put out material videos that are between 30 and 60 minutes long. And then there are other handouts and such. So, you know, just, you know, let's say an hour rounding it up is of actual lecture stuff. And then what more you want to do besides that is up to you. <coughs> okay, so that is the digital catalog. 
Uh, let me pass out the sign-in sheet. Uh, make sure you print your name on this. Allegedly, I'm also passing around a pen. Hopefully I get it back. All right, so um, what I want to mention also, the materials of the class so far, I want to remind you. Uh, and if you're new today, here is where you can get the syllabus and previous notes and such. And for everyone else, this will be a little reminder. But uh, if you open up the uh, computer window, double-click computer at the top left, then you will see a section down here, network location, double-click on classroom data, drive Z, Z um, as in zebra. Since I'm using my own computer, um, what's the code to get into uh, you won't be able to get to this folder on your computer, but you will be able to get into our internet access with the password of CE Spring 2017. Even though we're still in, we're in the summer, they didn't change it. What was that again? Okay. I have it right here. CE oh. Spring 2017. So that's for our Wi-Fi, which they will probably change in the fall, and you might be able to figure out. You might be able to crack the code to see what the password in the fall will be. Is it case sensitive? It shouldn't be. All right, so then um, if you look inside of classroom data, drive Z, and you scroll down to find campus uh, social one, double click campus social one. And if you're new this week, there's the syllabus, campus social media syllabus code of conduct, and notes from the previous week. So I'm going to write notes, and I'm going to put them in the folder. I'll turn on the printer a little bit later if you'd like to print them. Um, but when I pass you material, they will be in this network folder. So for today, uh, I want to start this, my notes. You can write your own notes or write inside of the computer. Remember to take the work with you. If you if you write any notes yourself, you have to take this with you on a flash drive or else uh, it'll be gone next time. When these computers turn off, it erases everything we did. Today's topic, Facebook. So Facebook is the largest social network in the world. It's one of the, mo the top traffic sites in the world, probably second place. The, the site that people visit most online per day is Facebook, second place. First place is Google, so google.com. Those are the top visited websites. Facebook just passed a milestone like four days ago. Mm -hmm. Anyone hear about this? Mm -hmm. What was the milestone? Two billion users worldwide. So world population is seven billion. So two billion people use Facebook globally. There's seven billion people globally. So there's a lot of people using Facebook. Uh, so founded in 2004, Facebook is, um, so the good thing about Facebook, a lot of people on it, for a business, so this is of course for business. There's a lot of people on it. Bad thing about Facebook, a lot of people on it. That's a double-edged sword, that there are so many people on Facebook. The good about it is that there's a lot of people, a lot of potential customers on Facebook. Again, using the fictional business, Victor's Bakery, I want to reach an audience. I want to sell cupcakes. I want to sell birthday cakes. 
So if I get on the biggest social network with the most people, 2 billion, I may find the audience I'm looking for. I will be able to find a global audience or a local audience, right? If I'm in uh, San Diego and I want to reach an audience, um, it's coming this way. The, the sign-in sheet is coming this way. Yeah. So I want to reach a global audience uh, or a local audience. If I'm in San Diego, I want to reach the people in San Diego. I can do that. If I want to reach the people in San Diego, California, I can do that. If I want to reach the people in San Diego, Texas, I can do that. If I want to reach the people in San Diego, Venezuela, I can do that. Yes, there is a San Diego in Texas and Venezuela. So I can reach people all over the world. But the bad thing is, the downside is that there's so much competition. I'm not the only bakery on Facebook. I'm not the only bakery in San Diego in Facebook. I'm not the only bakery, perhaps, in this block in San Diego on Facebook. So we need to talk about how to reach the right audience when there is so much competition. As I said, full disclosure, personally, previously, I don't like Facebook. I don't like to use Facebook personally for connecting with friends and family and all of that. I don't really like it. I don't like the people behind it. I don't like its philosophy. I don't like Facebook. But for business, I love it. For business, I can reach an audience. So I put aside my feelings for when my company gets hired to do social media for a client and we run Facebook for them. We create their profile the right way, we put the right things, we engage in Facebook ads and other ways to reach an audience, and it works. I can show you statistics from clients that the effectiveness of using Facebook is very high because if you use Facebook right, you have a huge audience that you can reach. Like every other network, Facebook has posting, or you know, on Twitter they're called tweeting uh, or sharing. You have the ability to post something on, on Facebook, just like every network. What are some of the kinds of posts we can make on the other networks? Do you remember? Video, text, photos. Every network lets you do the, these sorts of posts or messages or, uh, or sharings. There's also links, so you can post uh, some text on uh, Facebook, no limit. Video, there's a couple of ways to do it, but the built-in video system of Facebook, I have, to check up, I have to check up on the exact limit at the moment, but I think it's about two minutes time limit. There are ways to do longer videos, which we'll talk about, but uh, I believe it's a short amount of time for a certain kind of video that you can do. Photos, you can do albums, no limit, basically. You can upload 10 photos. Twitter only lets you do up to four. Google Plus lets you do unlimited photos. Google Plus lets you do unlimited text. Videos on on Google Plus could be unlimited if you first upload them to YouTube. Sort of similar here too. I believe there's a limit. They change it all the time, but there should be a limit to the length of the video on Facebook. But via links, you can link to a YouTube video that is three hours long. So uh, links could be to a website or another social network. Like YouTube, you could link to a tweet in your Facebook if you wanted. There's, um, there's all of that. What's very unique for Facebook, we have events. We have events on Google+, Plus, but we've got events on Facebook. So these are uh, real or virtual get-togethers. We'll, uh, we'll look at events when we get to that to see what the detail is. We have offers. So like coupons and such. You can create offers to entice people, visit our website, 10% off, use this coupon code. You can do 
authors. Uh, we can do blog posts. This is for more design. On Twitter, we basically have basic text that we can add. On Google+, Plus, we saw that we can add a little styling, bold text, italic text, and such. Facebook gives us a way to, be, to create even more design, fonts and colors and all of that, like a blog post. It's a different kind of share like compared to text. It is specifically a blog post. They call it something, I'm blanking on its name at the moment, but it has a different name than a blog post. We'll see what it is, but it's a way for you to write a longer article with pictures and text, like a, like a blog post. And we also have Live, Facebook Live, which is getting a lot of attention. This is um, broadcast live to your followers. Let me take a little digression here. Notes on live video. So uh, traditionally there was the pre-recorded video. Pre-recorded video. Sites. That is a site where you would upload a video that is already complete. I would record it on my phone, I recorded the event, and I upload it somewhere. I'm done with it. Or I record a video, I use a video editing software to remove the part where something embarrassing happened, or I use a video editor to put text or music, I edit the video, and then I upload it somewhere. What are some sites you may have heard of to upload video to? You might have heard of this little site called YouTube. What's your favorite um, editor for videos? Let me finish my thought here, and then I'll and then I'll answer that. So YouTube is one of the pre-recorded uh, classic sites. There are also have you heard of Vimeo.com? There's also uh, Daily Motion. There's a bunch of sites. YouTube is the biggest one of all, but um, There's some other ones. There's some being made all the time. There was one that just launched a few months ago, and I created an account, but I, I already forgot what it's called. <laughs> I have to look it up. Uh, it's like VMe or ViewMe or VidMe, something. I think it's VidMe, vidme.com. Hopefully that's it. But there's a bunch of these new, there's a bunch of video sites. Even though YouTube is the biggest one, they all have their own purpose. They have their own clientele, their culture, etc. So all of these were the pre-recorded sites. You had to have some sort of video properly edited before you can upload it. So to, to note here, popular video editor software. So I'll mention I'll mention some then I'll mention my favorite. Here's iMovie. Everyone that has a Mac, you can get iMovie. It works really well to edit your movie, to cut out the parts that you don't want, to add music, to add text and animation. It's free. There's also Windows Movie Maker for Windows. Unfortunately, I believe, uh, I don't think you can download Windows Movie Maker anymore. I think they're going to release a new version. Um, and it's also, this one is also for free, it's for Windows. But last time I checked to download it a few weeks ago, it wasn't, it wasn't available for download again. Uh, so if you have a copy of that on your computer, you have a pretty good video editor. Uh, other ones that are out there, we have Adobe Premiere. Adobe Premiere Elements, that's Windows or Mac. We also have Adobe Premiere, the Big Brother version of it, Final Cut Pro. What else is there? Um, 
Anyone know any other video editors that you might have heard of, or what are they using in, in the other you know, graphics classes, video classes? Anyone take those classes? Sony Vegas, right? So there's a bunch of these other video editors. Um, the one I would recommend, though, is Adobe Premiere Elements. Uh, this one is Windows and Mac. This one is not free as opposed to iMovie. It ranges between $79 and $99 one-time cost, whereas Adobe Premiere is part of the Adobe Suite, which includes Photoshop and Dreamweaver and Illustrator and all of this big professional software. But Adobe Premiere, that costs hundreds of dollars when you buy the monthly subscription, which ranges between like $30 and $50 a month, something like that. So 30 times one year. That's over, you know, three hundred and fifty dollars or four hundred or something. So, four hundred dollars a year, let's say, for Premiere. But it also comes with Photoshop and Dreamweaver and all of this other software. Very expensive. So I would recommend Premiere Elements, one-time fee, and I and I have that range there because the regular price is ninety-nine dollars, but they have deals for it on sale of seventy-nine dollars all the time. At Fry's, for example, I see it at Fry's Electronics for $79 pretty often. I see it also once in a while at um, Costco. So the problem is, though, that it's complex software. Even with the, with the simpler iMovie and Movie Maker, video editing is complex. Um, has anyone had any experience in video editing software? A couple of people. So if you take part three of the class, when we get to YouTube, we're going to spend one day talking about using video editor software to edit a video. We've got a great video, but there's a part in the middle where the camera fell down and is pointing at the floor. Well, I want to cut that part out. We will see how to do that with, in this class, Windows Movie Maker, because we've got Windows computers, we have the free version. But whatever you learn in one software, you can apply to almost every other software. It's just, where is the right button? The screen looks different but all of this is video editor software. New generation of video sites. Live video. One of the famous ones that came out first is called Justin.tv. <coughs> Here's another one that's still around, very popular, Twitch.tv. There's also Ustream.tv. Do you see a motif here? Um, then we started to get these other ones, Meerkat, Periscope, then um, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Live. These are just different versions of the same concept, which is turn on your app and broadcast. followers. I build followers on Periscope like I do on Twitter. I build followers on Ustream like Facebook. I build followers on YouTube like YouTube. And what that is is then uh, I, I get the app, I turn it on, and then I start to record and everyone that's following me could watch what I'm doing. Now again, like every other social network, we have the two sides of the coin. The frivolous side and the professional side. Both are totally valuable, uh, valuable and valid. The frivolous side is I turn on my camera and I show everyone what I'm having for breakfast. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? All my followers care. That's the frivolous side, yes. But let's say for business, I turn on my recorder and I do a Q&A session with my followers about how to invest in real estate. Both have the same software, Facebook Live or Periscope, whatever, but I'm using one for something fun and frivolous and valid and one for business. So on the day that we talk on YouTube, we'll talk more about ideas for types of videos to create. I will touch on a little later Facebook Live because we're going to touch talk about Facebook today, but all of these are to reach your audience live. Therefore, no editing. If you make mistakes, flub your lines, fall over, 
there's no way to edit it. It's live. <laughs> so if you plan it a little bit, hopefully you get a good result. Hopefully. Hopefully. Is it, yeah. Is live captured so other people could see it another day? Yes, it is live at the moment, and then it's stored so people can come back to watch it if they didn't catch it the first time. So uh, these record live and then store for playback. Now, of the video editors that you mentioned, which one is your favorite? Personally, I really like Periscope. That's the one that I really like to use uh, to do the broadcasting. But as most things, if we only have time or budget for one thing, Facebook Live. For edits? Edits. Uh, edits, I, I set up here, Premiere. Oh, that's your favorite. Yeah. I like the Premiere Elements a lot, that one. It's very powerful, but not so complex like those other three ones. That's the one I like to use. So uh, Facebook Live, if you've only got time for to learn one thing and do one thing, Facebook Live, and it's pretty easy. You get the app, you turn it on, and then it's up to you what you're showing. What are you, what are you doing? Now, remember I mentioned the website previously. I'll mention it again. Get ideas from socialmediaexaminer.com for live video. They have articles all the time to give you ideas on what kind of live video. I just said a Q&A session. I may be a realtor. I've got a website. I'm a realtor. The purpose of my website is to get leads, to have people call me to try to sell or buy a house. Well, if I've got on my website a link that says, every Friday, 1 p.m. Pacific time, I answer your real estate questions. People might come back, visit, watch the video at 1. Hopefully they subscribe or follow so that they keep up to date, so that they get notified. Victor's Realty.com is currently broadcasting. Um, so that Q&A session, again, what am I going to say? What am I going to wear? Where am I going to record it? How do I do it all? That's a little too far than I want to get into now, but socialmediaexaminer.com will give you a lot of great advice. That was the digression regarding live video. We'll talk more about it a little bit later, but any general questions about live video or video in general? So getting back unique to Facebook Live. Well, YouTube now has a live streaming version also. They had for a long time their pre-made video, right? Uh, a completed video. You have to upload a video to YouTube. Now you can do live video on YouTube as well. Uh, Twitter actually bought the Periscope company early on. So if you're using Periscope, that's basically Twitter's live streaming system. So that's the next generation, the new frontier, live video. Uh, video in general is very valuable nowadays. So of the kinds of content that you can share, my recommendation is try to create content that is video-based. Most effective nowadays is video content. Rather than text content, picture content, video is what I would recommend. But it is the most difficult. You have to have something to record the video. Hopefully you edit the video a little bit to remove mistakes. You might not care if there are mistakes. That's, a, that's an aesthetic, too. That's fine. But video. And then we get into the questions about how long should the video be and what's the best camera and all of that. We'll get to that when we talk about YouTube. Yes? So I, ju I just looked at the Social Media Express site, and they had an article on how to easily edit video. Social Media Examiner or Social Media Express? Examiner. I'm sorry, Examiner. So they, they uploaded one recently? Uh, yeah, on the 27th. Hmm. No, let's take a quick look. Socialmediaexaminer.com. 
Facebook quality LinkedIn how to easily edit video a simple guide okay great want to start editing your own videos but aren't sure how look for a powerful tool whether you're publishing video in this article discover how to edit your video content with a free tool so you don't break your budget all right I would read that article and um, Here's another answer. I like this site a lot, Social Media Examiner. So whatever they're recommending here, I would most likely be on board because it um, a lot of great stuff here. Hit film, so you'll be able to do cool '80s retro uh, text on your videos. Ways to color it. User guide output. So yeah, video editing, no matter the software, it can be rather complex. iMovie is very user-friendly and such, but still, uh, if you don't know what it means to make cuts or to add audio tracks and all of that, even the easiest software is going to be complex. So when we talk about YouTube, we'll have one whole day where we talk about video editing, uh, and uh, hopefully that'll help you to use it on any video editor. It's a pretty long article, actually. <laughs> A lot to learn, even if it's easy. It just keeps going and going. A lot of keyboard shortcuts to memorize. So, uh, studies are showing that video content is becoming what people are reacting to. All of social media is a marketing tool. Just like that billboard on the 805 is a marketing tool to get me clients. Just like the ad in the newspaper is a marketing tool to get me clients. Social media is a marketing tool to get me clients. We're getting so jaded or desensitized to a text uh, post on Facebook or a picture. Um, a video might stand out more. And this, of course, depends on your audience. I shouldn't say we are all getting desensitized, but an audience. It depends on your audience who you're trying to reach. The younger audience often is the one more on the vanguard of things, on the cutting edge. The younger audience is reacting more to video. Questions about the length of it and the subject and all of that, we'll get to that on the YouTube lecture. So Facebook gives you analytics, what they call insights, stats, for you to determine what is most effective for you. Time of day, day of the week, type of post. People ask, what's the, what's the best time of day to, to share on Facebook? Or what kind of photo should I share? And you'll find plenty of articles that will tell you, be sure to, to post every Monday at 8 a.m. And all of them are right and all of them are wrong because it depends on your audience. My audience uh, for a video game company isn't up at 8 in the morning on Monday morning. They're up at midnight on Friday night. So that's the best time for me to post uh, for my business. So you can see those articles about the best times and all of that and statistics, but you'll get better results if you look at your custom statistics that tell you how you have been doing and give you suggestions on how to do better. So we'll look at Facebook Insights when we get into Facebook in a little bit. Then we've got, like every other network nowadays, two ways to use Facebook. Free, not free. Um, so this would be called organic um, reach. This is paid reach. Both work. It's just depending on your time. How much time do you want to put into it? The free methods work, but they take longer to build your audience, longer to find the right audience, longer uh, to be effective, but eventually it becomes a snowball. The more followers you have, the more followers you get. Because all of the networks uh, recommend 
recommend you things. Do you ever log into these social networks and it says, you know, John liked this. So it's telling you, John did that. They liked something. I like it too. Let me like it. So there's all of these sort of web of connections on all of the networks where it snowballs. The more followers you get, the more followers you will get because of the more friends of friends. On these networks, popularity breeds popularity. Activity breeds activity. The more you're active, the more results you'll get. However, that takes time. If I've got one follower, it's going to take a while for that to add up to more followers. Based on the things we talked about previously for Twitter and Google+, Plus to find followers, those things will apply here too. The big idea was search. We will be able to search in Facebook to find followers. But then we'll also look extensively at the not free aspects of Facebook. The, not the pad search, the paid search. Uh, how to find an audience paying to, to reach an audience. And you could start with as little as one dollar. People often get bent out of shape when I start to talk about paying on these no social networks. You know, we have this sort of reaction about, well, this, I thought this was free. I thought, you know, why are they going to charge us? This, this doesn't make sense. But think about it in terms of marketing in the real world. That billboard wasn't free. That uh, spot in the newspaper wasn't free. Hopefully that person flipping that sign around is not doing it for free. Hopefully they're getting minimum wage. So digitally, we should not be shocked that to reach the most audience, we should think about paying to reach that audience. And we could do it with as little as a dollar. So we'll talk about that when we get to it. Facebook has personal profiles and business pages, just like Google+. Plus. So it does differentiate between the two. There's an account for personal, for people, and there's an account for businesses, or brands, or non-profit organizations, basically non-people. You should use the right one for the right task. It's very easy for people to create a personal profile for their business. They did it wrong. Worst case scenario, your account could be shut down. Facebook has all of those rules that no one reads, but everyone agrees to when we click Agree. Every network has this. All of those rules, those terms of service. And in there, it says you will use the network the right way. You will use a personal profile for a person. And you will use a business page for a business or a nonprofit organization or your band or your community center, whatever. You will use the right kind of account for the right task, or else you could get shut down. Personal profiles lack many features a business needs. Business page, many more features than a person. So it still behooves you to have it set up the right way. You don't get insights as a person. Why would a person need to know the statistics about how well their posts uh, impacted people? Facebook thinks. Why would a person need to create offers? It's a person. So business pages have more features. If you created a page previously as a person, it can be converted into a business. But we will talk about setting it up the right way. So a lot of theoretical stuff we'll get hands-on in just a moment. Any questions so far on anything about Facebook so far? All right, so we're going to use Facebook then. Uh, how many of you had a Facebook account before you enrolled in this class? Almost everyone. See, the two billion people. How many of you previously, before enrolling in this class, had a Facebook business page? A lot less people. Look at that. So you may not have needed a business page before, but now I'm going to say you most likely need a business page if you're doing Facebook for anything besides a person. For example, I have a Facebook page dedicated to the classes that I teach. I'll mention it in a moment. The purpose of that is I want people to come to my classes. So I'm going to post on Facebook what classes are coming up. I'm going to reach an audience. They will be educated on the classes that I'm teaching, and then hopefully they come to class. 
I have, let's say, the fictional Victor's Bakery. My purpose there is to sell birthday cakes. So I'm going to create a business page on Facebook to get customers to buy birthday cakes. Let's say I have a nonprofit organization. Um, you know, save the rainforests. So I have a Facebook page on that. I'm not trying to sell anything, although I'm trying to build awareness, maybe get donations and such, or maybe get volunteers to come and help. I build a, base, a Facebook page for that. I use the right task for the right, um, use the right, the right kind of page for the right task. Go ahead and open your web browser and let's go to facebook.com. Everyone on Facebook that creates an account, we will get an address. For example, facebook.com slash instructor Victor C. And here's one of the many things that I'm going to complain about Facebook as we talk about Facebook. I simply want to look or I want to show you an account on Facebook. But first, a security check. Okay, I'm going to type this code. The reason for this is it wants you to log in. If you're logged in, you can bypass some of these security checks. I don't want to log in at the moment. I simply want to show a page. That's strike one for Facebook today so far. Okay, so I want to show facebook.com slash instructor Victor C. Here's strike two, a big old pop-up that says, why don't you log in? Facebook is a lot better if you log in. Not now. <laughs> so I simply want to show facebook.com <coughs> Instructor Victor C. Capitalization doesn't matter, but is useful for reading it. So we'll talk about this, getting your Facebook username, because the default is when you create an account on Facebook, most likely I would create, it would give me something that looks like this. Facebook.com Instructor Victor C dash gibberish. The default is it's going to give you a, a, an address on Facebook with a gibberish name unless you claim your username, which I'll show you how to do. Because that's much nicer there. That fits on my business card. That is something that I can tell people to visit. The default with a bunch of numbers is not. So here's a page. Instructor Victor Campos. I'm posting here um, articles about classes and programming and all of that, social media, I'm putting it out here. The purpose of this Facebook account is to show these are the classes that I teach. Why not enroll in some of my classes? So again, what's the purpose? What's your online goal? You have to figure that out. My purpose here is to get people to sign up for classes. At the moment, there are 110 likes. Basically, Facebook counts those as your followers. I have 110 followers on Facebook. I'm going to click on the Facebook logo. That takes me back here either to sign up sign in. If you've already got a Facebook account, most likely it's a personal account, and we will use that to then create a business account. Writing the notes here. I haven't finished saying which one I'm going to do here. So, uh, use a personal profile. A personal profile to create one or more business pages. The content of the personal profile is not visible on the business or vice versa, unless you choose that. People always ask, uh, 
can I just create the business page without any personal information? No, Facebook really guides you to create a personal account first, then a business page. Uh, but you don't have to use the personal one. You can put your name and that's it. I guess birthday also. But you don't have to put your high school, you don't have to put your favorite book, you don't have to connect with your colleagues at work, you don't have to use the personal one at all. You just need that login to then be able to create or manage the business page. So to answer people, I would recommend simply log in with your personal account and then I'll show you how to create and use the business page. So you could take a moment to sign up and create a brand new fake person. The problem will be then, if you really get into it and start using it effectively, you've got a fake account that you have to deal with. And I think with Facebook, it's, it's more difficult to deal with it when you've created a fake account. Because it's going to ask for some email, a birthday, it may confirm your identity. Again, Facebook really, really is about, like, real people. So I would recommend sign in with your current account, and then I'll show you how to switch over to the business one. <clears throat> You have to enter your password twice. I recently changed my password and I forgot that I changed it so it told me you changed your password recently. All right, so um, you should sign in to your account. I've signed in, it's my account, it's patting themselves on the back. Great job, two billion people, um, friends, and so forth. In my case, because I've already set this up, I've had it for years, and as I said, not only do I teach these concepts, but I, I'm also part of a company where we get hired to run Facebook for clients or set up Twitter or make YouTube videos. So in my case, I have my personal side of the Facebook, and then I've got all of the pages that I manage. You may not see this, and I'll show you how to set it up in a moment. But I manage these other businesses, these other local San Diego businesses. And I, on a sidebar here, these are the pages I can manage. And there are some, some alerts about activity happening for those businesses. So the stuff of my personal Facebook never shows up on those businesses for the clients. That would be horrible. Uh, there's no connection between my personal stuff and that business, the client's stuff. Facebook sets it up that way, like Google+. So a person can create or manage multiple Facebook business pages. If you click on the top right corner, there's a black triangle. If you click on that, it shows the same sort of thing. These are the pages that I can manage. There is one message that we need to deal with. I can see more of the pages. I'm managing like 10 pages for different clients. But you probably don't see that if you haven't used Facebook for, for business. You don't have any pages to work with. You've just used it for personal. So notice we have the option there, create page. So the first thing you want to do then, when you log into your personal, you want to click to manage your business page. You don't have one. Let's go through the process right now of creating a page. This can be for a local business, this can be for an online business, this can be for a plumber, a realtor. You saw the page that I created for myself as an instructor. So you can create a Facebook page for just about anything. So notes here. Log into Facebook via personal credentials. Click on the triangle at top right. It probably has a specific name, but it's that little black triangle at the top right. Click on the triangle at top right to 
switch to a business page that exists or create a page for your business. Let's go through the process of creating that page. If you already have a page, just wait a moment while I, while I get to that. You can just go to your page, or you can um, create a new fake page for anything you want so that you can learn some of these things and not apply these things to your existing page. This stuff is live. It's public. As soon as you start to make changes, people will see it. So I would still recommend, even if you've got a page that exists, just create a fake page like I'm about to show you, learn all of the different tips and techniques of Facebook, delete that page, and then apply that information to your real existing page. So the way that works, click on the triangle, click on Create Page. Give your brand, business, or cause a voice on Facebook and connect with the people who matter to you. It's free to set up. Just choose a page type. We have six big types. Local business, company, brand, etc. Local business requires a physical location. For this fake account I'm going to create then, I'm going to select company. Even if you want even if you want to set this up for your real business with a real location, I wouldn't do local business just yet because it wants to confirm your identity that you are a real business via a phone number. Uh, so for the moment, I will just select company. And there's less to fill out here. There's a box to select a category. What category is your business in? And there's lots to choose from. I'm going to create a business, um, you know, Third Avenue Bakery. Bakery, food. So there's a section on food and beverages. Let's say I'll call it Best Bites by Victor. Let's say that's the name of the bakery. Uh, you, for yourself, you make something up here. Don't do the same thing that I'm doing, of course. But if you are doing this for a real business or a fake business, just make something up. And there's a little check mark here that is turned on. This is strike three for Facebook today, which is get tips in Messenger. So what's going to happen here is Facebook is going to send you little updates and little messages in your Messenger app to say, why not try this? This is a good idea. Try that. Don't forget to do this. It's going to send you like text messages like your friends and family do. You're going to get the notification, oh, someone sent me a message, probably a, probably a fun family picture. And I look, oh no, it's Facebook telling me how to use Facebook. <laughs> so I don't like that. I would turn it off. It may be useful. I don't know. I just think nowadays so much is coming at us that I don't need another notification from another thing that is going to try to take my attention. I'll click Get Started. They've changed this recently. This is, this is known as the onboarding process, just a fancy term, some jargon from this industry. The onboarding process is simply what are the steps that a person does to create an account to get on board. Uh, Twitter has had an onboarding process. When you created your Twitter account, it said pick some local people to follow, type your interests, etc. Um, Facebook has this one. They all have various versions of it. Set up the account to get on board. This one says step one of three. Add a profile picture. Help people find your page by adding a photo. Just like every other social network I had told us, you want to complete your profile. You want to put a logo profile picture 
you want to put a top graphic, you want to complete the account to entice people to follow you, to make yourself look legitimate. I don't have a picture of my business to upload, but I want to do it as soon as I can. So for the moment, I have to skip. But if I had a company logo, I would select it. So I'll skip. Question? Hmm. Maybe everyone's got slightly different pages because not everything has been upgraded. Uh, no, that's fine. Uh, I'll get to that page in one moment. For some reason, it's not showing you the screen. It just took you directly to your page. This is strike four for Facebook. Uh, it's going to show different things to different people, apparently. Uh, this, is, uh, this is actually, interestingly, this is Facebook A-B testing. Have you heard of that term, A-B testing? A-B testing is when a company tests a version of their product, version A, version B. So some of us are getting version A, that we see this. Some of us are getting version B, that it goes directly to the page. They're then trying to gather information to see what's the best based on their test. So we're all being guinea pigs at the moment. If you see this here, great. You can do it if you want. If not, we can get to this screen in a different way in one moment. I'm going to skip that. I also do not have a cover photo to add to my account, which is just a nice big graphic that catches attention, what's like we saw on Twitter. What's the difference between this photo and the photo in the previous one? Like I just said, the logo, the first photo, is just this little photo right here. Oh, that's the only thing you were putting up? Well, on the previous, on page one, it was to select this one. Ah. On page two, it's to select that one. Different size. Um, just a, a little bit more branding to show off my business. Click skip. I don't have a photo to use. Again, in this version of the sign-up process, I also say, it also tells me why not let your friends and family know about your brand new page to build your followers? I'll show you how to get to this page if it didn't show it to you like it did for me. But this is something that in, in my company, we argue back and forth with the people in my company about this, about building connections to your business based on your current connections. I have the ability here to recommend all my current followers. I could, in theory, get 50 followers right now because of these 50 friends. And that sounds very enticing. But I then always ask, are you going to build your business on the, on the backs of your friends and family? The purpose of this Facebook page is to sell cupcakes. I doubt that my friends and family don't already know I, I do that. And if I select them, I'm asking them, Facebook is going to send them a message, would you like to like Victor's Bakery? They may choose yes or no. I may feel bad that they chose no. I thought they were my friend. Why didn't they chose yes? <laughs> Secondly, uh, if I just blindly select all, maybe one of these friends of here is, is, is diabetic and recommending them to my bakery company is insensitive. And then also, again, am I going to build my business on the backs of my friends and family? How many times am I going to advertise to my friends and family, sale this Saturday, before they click unfollow? So the fight that I have in my business is I don't believe this is that valuable. I don't believe very much to connect with friends and family to try to build followers. I can do that on Twitter. I can do that on Google+. I can do that on Pinterest. All of the networks say, why not connect with your friends and family to like this page? Why not upload your address book to, to reach out to your friends and family? I personally don't like that because, again, we see so much stuff. We have so much advertising nowadays. We have so much taking our attention. And here now, I'm going to start to annoy my friends and family about, like my page, sale this Saturday, this and that. Other people in my company will argue that the value of that is friends of friends. If we connect with these friends, Josh may have a connection to someone that I don't know, and Facebook, to some degree, will cross-promote. Facebook will tell Janet, Josh liked Victor's Bakery. Why don't you, Janet, like Victor's Bakery? 
that may give you some result. I may reach out to 50 friends and maybe 20 of them like, so then I figure out who the true friends are, and then 20 friends of friends connected to someone there may also like. So it's, it's either or. I personally don't do this. I don't see as much value as, as you think it'll have. Other people in my company say it'll give you some value, and some value is better than zero value, so it may work. You can decide to do this or not. I'm going to skip it. And I'll show you the screen of how to get to that in a moment. Some of you got directly here. I was in, I was, we were, it was A, B testing. I was version A, some of you were version B. The, Facebook thinks if people create a page, maybe they just want to go directly to use the page. Here then is the spot for you to click to add the logo. Here is the spot to add the, the cover instead of it guiding you through it. And then if you want to add your friends and family, it's here on the side. So this is a different ways to present the same information. It's A-B testing. Companies do this all the time. They figure out what works best. Maybe some people, they figure out, they just click skip, skip, skip. So they think, okay, people don't want to do that. Let's just jump them straight to version B. Some people, as soon as they get to here, they say, well, I want to add my logo. I want to add my, my friends. And they think, okay, maybe version A works better. So we are constantly helping Facebook uh, change itself to our needs. On this version, though, I noticed that with the friends, there's no select all button. Yeah, exactly. So it's more cumbersome here. You have to click invite for each of these people. So is there any way to get on the A test? Nope. It's just random? It's random, yeah. Facebook is making random decisions to try to figure out the best process. And some of us got that process, and some of us didn't. So you do have to then manually select, click 50, 50 names. All right, so we'll look at one thing, then we'll take a break. Um, we have this account that we've created, and it's pretty bare. You want to add your logo and your cover image right away. It's not so obvious, but right below the name of your business, create a page username. That's the address. Because at the moment, I created this page and it's called facebook.com slash best dash bytes dash by dash victor dash gibberish. That is the official address to my account on Facebook. It's not going to fit on the business card and it's going to be hard to tell people. So if I want the nice, if I want a nice short named, not short name like best bytes, if I want to claim that short name, it's the username. Some of you may have the ability to choose that right away. Some of you may not. Again, A, B testing. So if you see the button to create a username, you can click it for a moment to see what it's about. You don't have to do it because if you've created this fake page like I did, you don't want to claim the name when you eventually want to create the real page. And if you already had a real page and you created this fake page for just the learning experience, you don't want to take away that name from the one you want to use on your real page now that you've learned how to do it for your real page. It's easier for people to find your page with this unique name. This They're borrowing Twitter's at icon, but it's the same idea. It's going to be some name here with no spaces, characters up to 50. You can do capitals, best bytes. This username isn't available. Facebook is, has been around more than a decade. Facebook has 2 billion users. You're going to run into this. Most likely, the name that you want is taken and was taken eight years ago. If you've got some basic name like this, someone took that a while ago. OK, I'm going to do Best Bytes by Victor. No spaces. That one's available. And some of these names. You know, I've seen people that try to pick five different versions because someone took the name. With so many people on the network and it being around for so long, unfortunately, most likely the name is taken. You have to settle for something else. 
So let's say Best Buy Site Victor was taken, so I have to do San Diego. <laughs> we have up to 50 characters. I would not, however, stress completely about getting that perfect name, because that name is one of the valuable things of your account. But the more valuable things are the content, the text that you share, the pictures that you share, the videos that you share. That's more valuable. This is just one of the things that's valuable. So as soon as possible, claim your username. You may have to settle for a variation. If you do, if you do, don't fret, you will still be found by the info in your about page, about screen, and the content you share on a regular basis. So that name, just because you had to pick a name you didn't really want, does not mean you are never going to get found. People don't know me as Victor's Bakery San Diego. They know me as Victor's Bakery. Don't worry. That name that you had to settle for is not the end of the world. Because the About screen, which we'll see in a moment, is another spot for you to put your name properly and a bunch of info. And even more importantly, the content that you will share on a regular basis. On Twitter and, Face uh, Twitter and Google+, Plus, I mentioned a, re a recommendation of what the regular basis is. What did I say for Twitter and Google Plus? How often should you share on social media? Minimally, as a beginner. Not quite. Once a week. Yes, once a week. So, you know, if I was giving grades in this class, <laughs> enough said. So, uh, once a week uh, should be the minimal amount of regularity. A little more often than that is better because, again, there's so much competition. You're not the only business on Facebook. You're not the only business in San Diego on Facebook. You're not the only bakery on San Diego and Facebook. You're not the only business on that block in San Diego in Facebook. So if you are more active than your competition, you're putting out more content that could be found as opposed to your competition. What content to share and all of that, we'll talk about it. But again, like what I talked about in Twitter and Google+, it's really going to depend on your business your brand, your product, your audience, but socialmediaexaminer.com has plenty of articles that give you advice on what should I share on Facebook if I'm a realtor, etc. So I'm not going to claim this name at the moment. This is a fake page, but this is the process that you would be able to do that. I believe there's a limit to how many times you can change this name. I think it's like once a year or once per six months or something. They don't want you to change your name often because that's sort of a spam tactic. Something is hot at the moment, something happened in the news, something happened culturally, some company creates a Facebook page all about it. You know, fidget spinners, facebook.com slash fidget spinners, the hot thing that all the kids are crazy over, right? Someone creates that account and then something else gets hot, so they change their page to another hot thing. Facebook doesn't want you to change your name all the time to catch capitalize on the trends. So... Is that name become available when you change your name? It should be released again back to the wild if you change your name and unclaim it, yeah. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, I don't know how, how soon it's available again, so I'd be careful about that. That's why I'm not going to choose a name right now, because I want to keep it open if, when I really want the business. And lastly, then we'll take a break. Uh, on the left side, you have all of these various screens that you can go to, and one of them is About. If you click on About, there are lots of things that could be filled in. We're going to take our break. If you'd like to look at these items, you can click to edit them. Most of them make sense. When did the business start? What's the mission of the business? Write, write a paragraph or something about the story of the business. 
all of this is up to you to figure out, to fill in. What's the email, website, and all of that. More about information, all of that, any awards. You don't have to fill them all out, but things that make sense for your business, you could. If this is a fake account like I'm doing, I'm not really going to bother. But if it's for your real Facebook page, I would fill all of that out as completely as possible. Um, you can do, do so during the break if you'd like. It's 10.50. We'll take a break until 11. And when we come back, we'll further look at how Facebook works and how to use it effectively.